Welcome to another edition of Bible Nuggets with Brother Bob. Close hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. So the sixth angel sounds, and then there's a voice standing by the altar that's in front of God in heaven, saying to the sixth angel, which has the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. All right, now here, folks, this, I want you to hear what I'm saying here. This is important because there are some recent um, developments in this area where this is going to take place. Uh, and I'll explain that here in just a second. But here again, we have four angels. They're fallen angels which are bound. They are bound in the great river Euphrates. Verse 15 says, And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, for a day, for a month, and a year, for to slay one-third part of men. So these four uh, fallen angels were prepared for a specific time in the Great Tribulation period to be loosed, and they are going to destroy one-third of mankind. Now remember, we're talking about, in modern-day term, terminology today, we have close to 8 billion people. We already know from the very first and the beginning parts of the seals being broken, uh, 2 billion people have already died. Now a third of what's left over, which would be about 6 billion people, a third of that is going to be destroyed. So there's going to be a lot of people dying during this time. Now, I will tell you that when it comes to the Euphrates River, this has been the, the lifeline for many of those countries to have that water, for drinking water, for bathroom water, uh, for everything, for electrical power and all of that kind of stuff. But suddenly, over the last six months or so, maybe a little bit longer, the Euphrates River is, is dropping. It's, it's going down. And now they have found in certain places where it's almost completely dried up, they have found ancient civilizations <clears throat> that go back four, five, six thousand years that were pagan nations that practice all kinds of paganism and worship of false gods. They have found these runes now and they have also found, and this is the bizarre part, they have found these openings or these cave openings that there are, and again, I'm just sharing with you some things, and, and, and I don't know if all of this is 100% accurate, but I think it's very interesting. There are people that have been there, archaeologists, that say that as they've been uh, uh, digging and uh, excavating these archaeology sites, they hear coming from these caves, these openings into the earth, these hideous sounds. And that even there's a recording that I'm going to play here, and, and you can hear it and you can judge for yourself. What is that sound? And it's coming from some, some part of the earth. The Euphrates has been the cradle of civilization in West Asia. The river has been the lifeline for millions in Iraq and Syria. And this site is estimated to be nearly three and a half thousand years old. He said the site in three consecutive years of low precipitation and reduced river flow. Since the Euphrates River is on its brink to becoming completely dry, many Christians are keeping a close check on its development. This is because the Euphrates River is mentioned in the Bible in connection with the fall of four angels after the river has completely dried up. However, very recently, a disturbing footage shows a location that made unusual sounds. 
It was reported that the location was on the Euphrates River and the sound came from under the ground that came out through a breach. The people who lived in the area believed that the voice was the voice of fallen angels that were imprisoned so that they could make a sound like they were asking for help. What does this mean for people all around the world? And is the prophecy that was written in the Bible coming true? Is it possible that these noises are being made by angels who have been cast down? possible that what we're reading here in Revelation that we're starting to see some of the fulfillment that is going to be taking place to cause what in the uh, 16th verse is actually going to happen. So let me read uh, uh, verse 16 here. It says this, And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. And this is talking about 200 million individuals coming and coming across a dried up Euphrates River. Most Bible scholars, preachers, uh, Bible prophecy teachers have always believed that this is referring to China. That Ch China is going to march an army from the east to the west ultimately to go to Israel um, and will wind up, which I believe will be part of the Battle of Armageddon. And they can only get there, that large number of army will be to march in that direction and eventually cross over the Euphrates River. And prior to it drying up, that could not take place. So it's very possible that we could be seeing some of these things start to be some of these uh, prophetic pieces, the puzzle, be put into place for uh, the Battle of Armageddon to take place ultimately. Um, it's just interesting when you look at this and you see some of these things. Uh, it's just, to me, it just speaks very loudly that God, it's not his will that any should perish. And God is so merciful that he's constantly revealing and doing things even now to prove to people that his word his holy word is true and that people time is running short you need to repent and get right with the Lord and God's merciful and he's patient and he's allowing people to be able to do that so to anyone who's agnostic or atheist that may be watching this it, just the archaeology alone proves the Bible to be true. There's not another spiritual religious book on the face of the earth that can compare or hold up to the archaeology proof of the Bible. You know, there there is a, uh, a false religion called Mormonism. Uh, their whole foundation is structured around a man by the name of Joseph Smith and that he found some golden plates in upstate New York and he was led to them by an angel called Moroni. And that is what the whole structure of Mormonism is about, are those golden plates and what that man said. But you can't find the golden plates. You can't find any of the archaeology proof for the people that are mentioned in the Book of Mormon that lived in the, what they call the Americas. There's no archaeology proof. So all, all you're doing is taking one man's word for everything that's written in the Book of Mormon. Where the Bible, uh, you have 66 different books written by many authors, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and you have Thus Saith the Lord, and you can go back and you can look at all the cities mentioned in the Bible, and you can go there today and see those and put your eyes on them. And you can go and you can see archaeology runes where they're digging up and finding things mentioned in Scripture that prove the Word of God. Now, hallelujah! No other book, no other religious book 
can, can make those claims and say that. So if you want to continue down the road of agnosticism and unbelief and atheism, you do it at your own pearl because God has placed witnesses all over the earth to prove to you that he is real and that everything he says in his book is going to come to pass. So the choice is yours, but I will tell you, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. So you need to listen, he take heed, and you need to repent and get right with the Lord. All right.